a step further and start measuring how far they go. And what's the first thing we require to measure how far they go? Something called a scale. So there have been primitive and old methods to do this. So we all like keep one foot with us. You can walk around. Yeah, place one foot next to the other, next to the other, so on. Count the number of footsteps you took. It's a very simple way of measuring. What's the problem with this? Each of us have different foot sizes. And that becomes kind of a problem. And usually what they do is take the king's foot and then they keep that as the foot. We all have this unit called foot, right? It's actually some old kings, I think. I'm not sure. So what happened was, uh, you can do that. You can have one unit that's that way. Or now you know there are many more modern units that we have right now. Things like, you know, you keep one fixed measurement. We all agree that that should be one meter or one foot or whatever it is. Then we can measure length that way. Length is a unit and that's how we measure. Or length is a quantity to measure what we call motion, right? So somebody moved this much, right? And we say that, okay, he moved, you know, some length. Let's measure that length. And we measure it with a unit so that we can talk about it. Now, let us get one step deeper. And let's try to understand what this thing called distance is because we keep talking about distance. Hey, how far is it? Right? Of course, if you go and ask somebody in real life, you know, how far is something? They'll tell you something like it's 15 minutes by train. It's a weird answer, isn't it? You ask them how far and they give you an answer in time, which we will talk about again, what time really is. It's really interesting. So what are we going to do now is let us say that you decide to go to your friend's house. You know, it's a party and you're here and let's say you're here and you know the route to your friend's house. It's somewhere there. Now, Obviously, you can take more than one route to reach your friend's house. So let's say you're here and they're there. Awesome. So what you decide to do, you have an ice cream parlor there. So you'd want to take a route through that and go like this and reach there. Now, what is the distance that you covered to reach your friend's house? So if you were to find that out, you have to take a thread and put it on that road throughout. And then take that thread out, extend it and measure how, how long it is using any scale that you want. Your answer could be in centimeters, meters, you know this. So you have an answer. Now, is that the only path you could have taken? Of course not, right? You could have taken something else. Let's say you want to pick up a third friend and then take go to that house. So you'd go down somewhere here, pick your friend up and then start going up and reach your friend's house. Now in this case, you obviously, it looks like you covered a different distance. So you take a thread, measure the whole thing, stretch it out, different distance. So how many such distances are possible? Infinitely many, right? Assuming that there are enough roads into whatever path you want to take, you could have taken any number of paths. So all those correspond to different distances. Of all these distances, one of them is very special. If you were to take that shortest path between these two, what would that be? Between any two points, we know what's the shortest path, right? As long as they're on a plane, the shortest path is going to be the straight line that connects them. Right? Why am I saying this? If it is on the earth, this is not true. Rigorously, right? Because the earth is kind of a sphere. Uh, the shortest distance between this and that, in reality, would be this. But if you are on earth, you'll probably have to walk around there and go there, right? So forgetting that, assuming all distances are quite small, and the earth can be assumed to be flat, right? Because if you're walking from here to another point, you're probably not going from the North Pole to the South Pole or something like that. So assuming it's flat, we know it's going to be the straight line that connects them. And that straight line between these two points is going to be called the displacement. Because sometimes you don't care about the actual path that you took, but you only care about where you began and where you ended. That's all you care about. So there are two quantities that we've spoken about. We're going to expand about them in a while. But the quantity one is distance which is the length of the actual path that you took between two points, A and B. So you take some path, put a string through them, take that string out, stretch it out and measure it. And there's the other quantity, which does not care about which path length you actually took, but only cares about the starting point and the ending point and calculates the shortest distance between the two of them.